Hello everyone, Death Stimulator here, bringing you something a little bit different today. We'll be taking a look at the arena mode of X Anima. X Anima is a really interesting kind of dark, low, f low magic um, RPG essentially, and it has a really fantastic combat system where all the animations are kind of dictated by dis digital mu digital muscles and digital physics. I was really attracted at first by the art style. It's kind of top-down isometric, reminds me a lot of the old Diablo games, one of the first kind of games that I actually played, and still one of my favourite games today. Uh, and then I became enthralled by the, the combat system in it. It's really exciting, really interesting, I hope you guys will check it out. And uh, if you like it, you know, check out the Steam page, uh, website, they've got like a whole bunch of stuff, links will be in the description. Unfortunately today there won't be a naval action video, I've had an absolute nightmare trying to record it today, I'm currently sitting in queue actually waiting for a game, it's not happening. I've <laughs> been doing a lot of open world as well, so uh, we'll uh, hopefully be able to get my character leveled up in time uh, to bring you stuff early next week. Um, yeah, and that's basically it, we'll jump right in. I'll not play the uh, the main game, uh, the main game's a bit of a story game, it's... Uh, you're kind of trying to leave this dungeon area, you've got to progress through, there's lots of stuff that I don't really want to spoil for you guys, but I really wanted to show you the combat system, so to do that, I'll actually show you the arena mode. So it's got a basic character thing, I mean, you can pick male, female, gender, give your character a name, uh, change your physique up. Uh, set your height, you can be a short person or a tall person, I'm just going to go with everything kind of average. Uh, I'm sure there's nothing in particular that's going to be wrong with that. Alright, so moving on. Now, uh, in the normal game you just get clothing to start with, uh, but in the arena mode you actually get to pick a weapon set and they all behave differently. So you've got your swords, which are your slashing weapons, you've got your blunt damage in the form of a club, your axe, which is kind of your heavy damage, and then a pole arm, as well as a shield. The shield can only be used with the sword or the uh, mace. Alright, uh, so it's a very nice looking game. Uh, you've got a nice lighting system. Uh, there are two modes of uh, control. One is a kind of standard uh, interact with the world. So you open doors, you pick up crates, you do that sort of stuff. The other is the one you're seeing now, which is the combat system. So you kind of move around in what's like a grid or tile system. It's not visible in the game, but if you look at the way the character moves, it seems like, you know, you're moving from point to point to point. And the other part of the system is, of course, swinging. So you block automatically if you're not mid-swing. And, uh, yeah, if when you do swing, momentum plays a big part. So your physical momentum, so your swing will have its own momentum. And then you can add momentum by moving, or you can reduce momentum, that sort of stuff. So, if I was to say dodge into an attack from him, I could block his uh, block his swing, reduce its momentum, and cause it to do very little damage, like that. Uh, there are two bars down the bottom. The yellow bar is your health, and the blue one is. I assume either an unimplemented stamina system or potentially a magic system, though my understanding of the universe is that it's a kind of a low to no power uh, universe. Though you do have globes like that going on, so I'm sure there's something else at work. Uh, the yellow bar has two different types. So there's the yellow and then there's the kind of dark yellow. This indicates stamina damage, so I haven't actually, I'm not bleeding, I haven't taken blunt, uh, like kind of that, I've taken blunt force trauma. Uh, if I am cut or I bleed, the damage will be permanent, you know, I won't be able to recover it. Stamina damage will come slowly over time, uh, kind of, I guess, rending damage like that, so you've got stamina damage and rending damage, that doesn't recover. Uh, it does in the arena mode, in the, uh, yeah. nope. <laughs> between matches I recover some, oh dear. Uh, some of my health. Not all of it, but uh, more so than you would in the uh, single player. So as you can see, I'm doing it fantastically here. I will admit it has been a little while since I have played this. Oh, and he's got me. Alright, 
So we'll just start again. We'll do a run through where I'm probably talking a little bit less. Let you guys actually watch and see what's going on with this combat system. I just stumbled across it on Steam. One of the uh, one of the things I do quite like about Steam is their uh, kind of suggested oof, suggested games uh, section. It uh, can let you come across stuff that you would never have uh, even heard of. Alright, so you do have the advantage as well, Link. I'm using a mace, it's a heavy weapon, it's able to kind of force its way through uh, smaller... Oof, that was almost bad. Now, uh, what you wear actually has uh, quite an impact as well, because some things will block you know, blunt force trauma better, some things will block bladed things better and there are like suits of armor and different types of armor and different types of shields and so on um, oh, it's not going well this is not a good showing uh, <laughs> I have actually worked my way through both novice and expert I'll give it one more try on novice if we don't do too well I'll uh, switch up to expert so you can see a bit more of the uh, heavier combat the uh, armored combat Largely the game's about timing, it's about finesse, and to a degree uh, it's about the physics as well. I'm sure there's probably ways I could exploit it, but really I'm just trying to <laughs> do things as straightforwardly as possible. Not try and actually exploit the AI too much. And so it's important to note that, like, the weapon damage is really dependent on where the weapon hits you and what a part of the weapon hits you. So, for example, the blade, uh, if the blade connects, it's going to cause me to bleed, it's going to cause, like, actual HP damage as opposed to stamina damage. Whereas if the shaft hits me, uh, I'm not going to... I'm going to take that kind of that blunt force trauma. All right, so he's actually... Got some things that we might want. So he's got full cover boots and a tunic which can go over my shirt. This is going to make me a little more resilient as we come up against a guy with a mace. I must admit his mace is slightly uh, nastier than mine. He's got uh, some spikes on it so it has the potential to do more uh, HP damage than ours does. Got me in the leg. That's probably going to put us out of commission for this one. There isn't, um, it's not like, not like old school juice X, which is a good thing, otherwise it would. Oh, that was a good hit. It would become old very quickly. You, lo location damage doesn't really affect your play style, um, which it's much or much it may be a decision that they uh, change later, but for the moment I think it's fine. All right, so we're gonna set ourselves up with some heavier gear uh, to start with. the stats looking on that yeah okay so we're gonna want the other one is it it's almost the same except it provides full slash protection actually goes over our current one never mind uh greaves and replace the boots and put this over leather tunic there probably take the better mace oh and some gloves protect our hand our little handsies a little bit all right so fairly kitted out this is about the level you get to in the uh first one the novice arena and uh, as you see, there'll be uh, a few more weapons here, a few different bits of armor. We might actually spend a bit of time uh, <laughs> changing up our gear, uh, at least more so than previously. Uh, just because, as you can see, <laughs> wailing on the guy, but uh, his, he's got good chain gear, so it's going to take quite a few more hits. All right, so. I'm going to keep the boots as they are, but we're going to put on some chain pants. Chain tunic? I think it's... hang on, I'll just have a look. See if it's better than what we've got at the moment. Yes. Uh, 
the coverage. I'm going to take the, the greater coverage more than the greater protection in this case. And that should be all fine. Uh, I'm going to stick with the Mason Shield. I like that uh, added block, that added defense. Alright, so she's actually fairly lightly armoured. We have to be careful with the sword though. Uh, well, for the most part we actually have like full chain on, uh, so the sword isn't going to do uh, a massive amount of uh, kind of HP damage. It's all going to be stamina damage like that. Uh, if she does accidentally get whew, get us in the face, uh, we could be in a lot of trouble because a good sword will uh, cut us fairly badly. So there are two types of swings that you can do. You can do the side-to-side -side swing, which can be taken from your uh, your left or right. And there is an overhead swing, which is riskier, leaves you open to uh, counterplay, that sort of thing. And also it's uh, very limited in the area that it actually strikes. Excuse the background noise. It is one, it is 1.30 in the morning in a suburban street. Ah... <laughs> uh, on a Sunday night. But you'll get that. Okay, so that was a less than ideal showing, but I hope you've seen uh, some of the cool things that you can do. I might pop into the uh, solo campaign just briefly and actually show you guys. Um, oh, this is, this is all new, actually. The skill progression stuff, since I last played. It's not too, uh, too big an issue, though. Uh, because the things I really want to show you isn't so much the story, I don't want to spoil any of that, because it actually seems like it is fairly interesting for what it is. Uh, but it's the uh, physics system. This is very cool. So I might need to get a bit closer to it. We should be able to pick up this torch. There we are. Okay. And now there are some things that we will be able to interact with based on weight. So, for example, we can't pick up this crate, but we're going to be able to pick up this box. We're going to be able to, you know, interact with piles of objects. We can barricade things. You know, you can physically barricade doors. Um, to a degree, that's kind of limited. Uh, naturally, you can't, uh, at least as far as I know at the moment, you can't, like, nail them shut. But that's not something you're really going to be overly concerned with. Um, it's more that you'll want to, you know, just like throw stuff in the way so no one's able to get through. Oh, that appears to be locked. Well, soundtrack's really nice as well. There's great sound effects uh, for the world, and there's a, a general um, undertone of uh, music that plays through that adds a great atmosphere to the game, makes it very sinister. You don't know why you're down here, but you're trying to find a way out in some sort of dungeon. And uh, for the moment, we'll uh, leave it there. We can revisit if you guys want to see more. Uh, do let me know. And uh, if you did enjoy the video, please consider liking, commenting, favoriting, or subscribing, as your support does mean the world to me. And I'll see you all next time.